This has been Sir Philip, and welcome again to my class, to my YouTube channel. And this time for today, I will be giving you a lecture about interpreting the mean and the variance of a discrete random variable, including the standard deviation. Previously in our class, we were able to discuss about getting the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. But how do we find or how do we get the mean and the variance of a discrete random variable? And that involves a probability, of course. Now, in this lesson, the learning competency that we have to develop in this lesson, I'll, I'll try to uh, increase the font of my presentation. The main um, learning competency that we have to learn in this lesson is, of course, interpreting the mean and variance of a discrete random variable. So it says here that in our daily experience in attending our classes, or maybe in your modular class, we encountered situations that need wise decisions. And decision making should be part of our skills, especially in achieving our goals. So just like, for instance, you wanted to know or guess about your performance in 10 statistics and probability examinations. So we have, for example, 10 of them. The scores are given by the teacher in each of the tests. So what can you say about your performance on the basis of the scores you obtained? So in our local term, kamusta ang imo score based sa nakuha mo nga, kamusta imo grade based sa nakuha mo nga score? What is your overall performance in this test? Now, you can answer your questions by calculating the average of the scores obtained to get an idea of your overall performance. It's like, for example, how you fare in, in, in the first grading, in your second grading, we can easily determine that by getting, of course, your average. Your average score will tell you about the scores that are most close to. And you can easily see the difference of scores in each of the tests from this average score. For example, your average grade is, let's say, 90. What is your lowest score? What is your highest score? How far is your lowest score from your average, which is 90? How far is your highest score from your average of 90? Now, this difference in scores shows the variability of the possible values of your random variable. And the random variable being the marks of our scores in the test. So the variance of a random variable shows the variability or the scatterings of the random variables. So I was able to tell you this uh, last time. For example, in our local term, sa tinapay, kung nagbutan ka da sa sandwich spread, how spread is your bread? Paano mo siya ginda? Ta, how far is the, the lowest or the pinakapunta sa punta sa middle? So that's how you, you look at it, the scatterings. And it shows the distance of a random variable from its mean. So we have already learned how to find the mean and the variance of a discrete probability distribution. Actually, what I have presented to you are the computation of the mean and the variance in normal numbers. How do we solve the mean and the variance of a probability distribution? I will be presenting it here, a new way to present. So let's start to discover how to, to interpret the data and know the implications of it. And this is very important because in our class in statistics, implication is always important. So how do we interpret the data? That's, that's how interpret implication comes in. For example, a mathematics teacher conducted this online class on a zero, one, two, or three days a week. The probability that he holds a class on a zero day is 0 0.35, that is the probability. The probability that he holds a class on one day is 0 0.25, and the probability that he holds a class on the two days is 0 0.30, and the probability that he holds a class on three days is 0 0.10. So question, find the average or the expected value represented by that symbol, it's like a U, of the number of days per week the teacher holds in online classes. For example, we have this data. So X is 0, 1, 2, and 3. The probability of getting the X is 0 0.35. Of 1 is 0 0.25, of 2 is 0 0.30, and 3 is 0 0.10. So what do we need to do to get your expected value? Or we call this as the mean of the probability distribution. This is quite new. 
what you need to do is to multiply zero by 0 0.35 and that gives you zero. One times 0 0.25 and, that's, and that gives you 0 0.25. Two by 0 0.30, that gives you 0 0.60. And three times 0 0.10, that gives you 0 0.30. So adding all of them, 0 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.60 plus 0 0.30, that will give us 1.5. 15. That is, of course, the mean of the probability distribution. That is your average now. And this is how we solve for average in a probability distribution. You multiply each one, the x by p of x, and you add all of them. Now, the expected value or mean is 1.15. This means that the mathematics teacher would, on the average, expect to hold online classes 1.15 days per week. The number 1.15 is the long-term average or expected value if the mathematics teacher holds online classes week after week after week. So I hope you get how to get 1.15. So another one, what if it involves the variance and the standard deviation? Roulette is a casino name, game named after French word meaning little wheel. And in the game, players may choose to place bets on single or either a single number or a single color. This is usually played during a barangay fiesta. So the bettor will choose a single number from one to nine. Unfortunately, the owner of the roulette wheel or wheel made it unfair, unfair well with the following probabilities. Unfair ang pagkuha ko sa mga probabilities. So there are nine probabilities and these are the probabilities of get, getting them my 0 0.10 then you have on the last one on the ninth on the ninth wheel it becomes 0 0.20 so what do we need to do you will be getting the mean the variance of the standard deviation so for our solution to get the mean again in probability distribution we multiply the x by p of x so multiply this and this to get this one so what do we need to do Again, multiply one by one. One times 0 0.10 is 0 0.10. Two times 0 0.10 is 0 0.20. Notice, try to notice that it, it is increasing from 0 0.10 until 0 0.80. So again, how do we get this? Multiply x by p of x. You multiply this by this, this and this, this and this, and so on until you get the eighth number. However, in your ninth number or the ninth x, 9 times p of x, which is 0 0.20, will give us 1.80. So to get your mean, we need to add all of them from 0 0.10 to 1.80. And it will give us, you may double check it with your calculators, it will give us 5.4. This is how we solve for the mean in probability distribution. So the mean is equal to 5.4. Therefore, it means that the average number that will appear in a roulette wheel is 5.4. And this implies further that although 5.4 5 will never show in a roulette wheel, spinning the wheel many times will result to 5.4. So this is how we interpret the data. The mean of probability distribution is much like of anything else. So it answers the question, if you perform this experiment many times, What's the likely average or what's the likely outcome or what's the likely result of that experiment? So to find the variance, this is just the same with how we compute with my previous video presentation. If we compute the variance, what do we need to do? Of course, you have your P of X, your X, you multiply them, we, we get this earlier. So when you raise this to the second power, meaning you raise this 0 0.10 raised to the second power, it will give you this figure. It will be one, uh, sorry, this figure rather. When you raise this, your X becomes one, your two becomes four, your three becomes nine. And four becomes 16, five becomes 25, six becomes 36, seven becomes 49, eight becomes 64, and nine becomes 81. Now question, what is this? X squared times P of X. Your P of X is indicated by this figure, okay? This figure, tanan ini, these are your P of X. So to get this, one times 0 0.10 is 
0 0.10. 4 times 0 0.20 is 0 0.40. 9 times 0 0.30 is 0 0.90. Is it correct? 9 x squared. 9 times p of x. No, it's, it's p of x. Sorry, I was wrong all the while. So 1 times 0 0.10, it's the probability distribution. Sorry. 1 times 0 0.10 is 0 0.10. 4 times 0 0.10 is 0 0.40. 9 times 0 0.10 is 0 0.90. Let's get this down. 16 times 0 0.10 is 1.6. 25 times 0 0.10 is 2.50. 36 times 0 0.10 is 3.60. 49 times 0 0.10 is 4.90. 64 times 0 0.10 is 6.40. And 81 times 0 0.20 is 16.20. Now, you get the summation. That means to say you have to find the average of 0 0.10 until 16.20. And that will give you summation of x squared where do we get this? This one. Okay, this is the figure. X squared times P of X is 36.60. So what do we need to do? This is a symbol for the mean or the variance. The variance is equal to summation of X squared times P of X. This is this figure. Minus your mean, which is uh, represented by this figure. So this is 36.60 minus our mean earlier that we computed is equal to 5.4. If you can still remember, 5.4, raise that to the second power. So if you have your calculator, what is 5.4, raised to the second power, it will give you or it will give us this number. So we have 5.4 raised to the second power is equal to 7, it will give us 29.16. So meaning to say 36.60 minus 29.16 is equal to 7.44. Now to get the standard deviation, here is your variance. The 7.44 is already our variance. To get the standard deviation, you get the square root of 7.44. 44, and it will give us, of course, 2.73. And that is now your standard deviation. So again, to recap, what is our mean? Our mean of the data earlier is we have 5.4. Our variance is computed as 7.44. And our standard deviation is equivalent to 2.73. So I hope you have learned um, just a few tips on how to solve this one. We need to completely write the table of our x, of our p of x. This first two are given. Okay, your x and p of x are given. So your x times p of x, you multiply this and this to arrive on this. Okay, that becomes 0 0.10. Your x squared is also your x raised to the second power. And of course, to get your summation of the variance later on, you have x squared times v of x to so one times one, or sorry, one times 0 0.10 is 0 0.10 and so on and so forth. So take note of the symbol of the table in such a way that you will not make a wrong computation. So I guess that would be all for my presentation of our, our interpreting the mean and the variance of discrete random variables. Should you have questions or misconceptions regarding this presentation, then you may write down a comment below so I may answer your queries. That would be all. Thank you.